Hey guys, it's Emily, the Little Reptile Queen. We're here again with Reina and Mike from Wild Education. Um, today we're going to be talking about small mammals. So right now we're in a nice, open, naturalistic cage and we'll do a big reveal for what animals. If you want to guess what animals are in this enclosure before um, we actually show you, that would be fun. Comment in the comments. But, are you ready? Yeah. Ready to see? There's oh. actually four animals in here. Uh, they're all the same kind. We'll open this up. Two, one, one go. Hedgehog. There we go, little <laughs> hedgehogs. So these are African pygmy hedgehogs. Uh, there's four little girls sleeping under here. Not the best pet. I mean, they're they're good <laughs> pets if you got patience for them and that. The downside is if you don't have patience and don't work with a hedgehog a lot, they're they're kind of a miserable pet to have. Um, so this one here, this is Gertrude. She's the the oldest one in here. Um, she's four or five years old at least. Um, so you see, I can hold her, I can pet her. She's great, she's cute and all that. Uh, <laughs> but that's because she gets handled a lot. If you don't handle a hedgehog a lot, uh, watch this one here. This one here is Lilac, she's the newest one. Get up nice and close, see if she'll do her little hissing thing. Yeah, she hisses oh, and gets more tense than that. This is the baby, yeah. Uh, oh, there we go, now she's in a ball. So this is, <laughs> there's, there's an angry little hedgehog right there. Uh, so they roll up into a ball, all the spikes tense up, and they kind of try to stab you with their quills. Now, what's cool about these guys is they're a little, they're not in, in any way related to a porcupine at all. They're a completely different family. Um, and with porcupines, oh, she's running away. With porcupines, if you touch a porcupine and the quill comes out in your finger and you pull your finger away, that quill is then stuck in your finger and you have to pull the quill out. These guys here don't do that. Uh, their quills just, they're just meant to try to stab you and that's about it. Um, but again, it's, it's not, the most fun thing to try to handle an angry hedgehog like Reina, pick up Lilac. Nope. Pick up Lilac. Just try, <laughs> try it for the camera. Show show them how. Yeah, you just deal with that. Try to pick up Lilac. I actually never picked up. Do it. You can do it. Do it. <laughs> if you don't do it, Emily has to. So you see how it tenses up. It's not the easiest thing to do. And the problem is a lot of people will get a hedgehog like this. Um, they'll try to pick it up a couple times and it tries to spike them. And they're like, you know what? No, I'm gonna deal with this another day because I don't want to get spiked. And they leave the hedgehog alone. And the problem is, is you just let the hedgehog win. So the hedgehog knows now, if it does that, you're gonna leave it alone. And over time, you just get this hedgehog that is completely unhandleable. Um, so it, you gotta have patience with these guys. So Emily, you, you try to pick up Lilac there. <laughs> And the worst thing is like they huff and then they like, as you're trying to pick them up, they like huff worse. And they literally try to like aim and stab you with the quills. Like they're actually do. trying to hurt you. I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> they're so angry little balls of hate. And that's why you got to be confident when you have a hedgehog and you just got to reach in Pick and you got to grab it up I like it this. Up. There we go. Just okay, a ball of spikes. Now hold it. There we go. It's still so pokey. <laughs> yeah, it's very, and if you touch them, Oh, she's not doing that. Sometimes they get angry and they try to stab oh, you when you're holding them. Very she's so fun. dense but too. But very cute. Um, we cute. are actually expecting babies from a couple of these guys. Uh, hedgehogs don't have the longest lifespan. That's the one good thing about having a hedgehog as a pet is they don't have the longest lifespan. It's about five or six years um, if cancer and a few other ailments don't get them first. Um, so we want to have, you know, a few hedgehogs all the time in here. We've got a couple of aging hedgehogs. Uh, so we decided to put a male in uh, with a couple of females. Uh, so in probably about a week and a half, we're going to have some little baby hedgehogs. Um, and for any mothers out there, it's awesome because baby hedgehogs are actually born with their quills. So something to think about. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Oh, actually, <laughs> no, 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 no. I know they're born with their quills. So probably think they're super duper spunky, but when the first born I actually soft. Yeah, the quills then, are soft. And then after <laughs> a few days or a week, they're they harden quills up. Will they harden. harden up. Yeah. But they'll still be little ones. Exactly. And they do shed their quills. Like if we look around in here for like two seconds, we'll probably find a quill. They do shed their quills. Oh, there's one right here. Yeah, see they shed their quills. Uh, so they don't come out like a porcupine, but they do fall out as they're walking. Sometimes you just shed their quills and get new ones. So yeah, there's hedgehogs. Do your research before you get one. They're awesome if you know what you're doing. Do your research before you get any pet. Yeah, before you get exactly. any pet, really, yeah. Hey guys, so now we're here with some different small mammals. Um, in my hand, I have a berry wolf Oh, I thought you were gonna say, do you remember what it's called? Isn't it a bear tail woolly there opossum? Yep. yep. His name is Cinnamon. Oh, get back over here. Cinnamon is the only one of his kind in Canada right now. 
Uh, so he was actually brought in. He's, he's been through some stuff. He was actually brought in. It's like gripped onto you. I'm sorry, They're very Simon. clingy. Uh, he was brought in for a film or a TV show a couple years ago. Uh, he was used for a film and then from there he was sold and sold and sold. Uh, and then him and his brother were actually found in a dumpster in an animal kennel. Um, he had killed his brother so then uh, went back to the original owners and then we were contacted to see if we could take him so that is why he's here now. These guys here, from everyone we've looked at, they live around five or six years. He's around seven or eight years old now. So he is definitely past his prime. We know his eyesight's starting to go a little bit in that, but he's still an awesome animal. Um, he's still eating, he's still going around. So we're, we're happy to have him. We love this little guy. He's so cute. Now, these guys are in the same family as the next guys. They are marsupials, uh, which are a very well-known marsupials, a kangaroo, obviously. So if this was a girl, it would have a pouch, just like any other possum would have. Um, this guy's a boy, no pouch, okay? Uh, now this, these guys here, I want you to come in. I'm gonna see if they're angry. Okay. Oh, listen. Yeah, noise. When people hear that noise, they think it's like some button I'm pushing. Oh, come on, one more time. Oh, I want the big growl. Oh, we're not gonna get it now. I think they've stopped. They're just doing little growls. No, no big growls yet. But if we look, the reveal. Aren't they cute? So these are sugar gliders and they are another marsupial. So another animal with a pouch. These are girls, so they do have a pouch. We're gonna bring out uh, Stitch. We have Lilo and Stitch. We're gonna bring out Stitch. Oh, there we go. Come here, little buggers. There we go, the sugar glider. These are a very misunderstood pet. A lot of people see them and see they're cute in that and think, oh, these are great pets. They are, in my opinion, probably one of the worst pets you can get. Uh, they've got a very strong odor to them. Uh, if you have a sugar glider in your house, that's pretty much all you're gonna smell. Um, they have a very specialized diet. You can't just go buy their food from the store. Uh, you've got to specifically make things for sugar gliders to eat. They peed on my hand. They <laughs> pee a lot. Every time you take them out, they pee on you, okay? Sometimes even thinking about holding a sugar glider, somehow you got peed on, okay? They pee a lot, they poo a lot. They are completely nocturnal. Now, one of the things that I see a lot of people doing is they'll buy a sugar glider and they'll have a little pouch for it and they walk around with a little pouch all day with it and they bond with it all day. Um, and people think that it's great for the sugar glider because it's bonding to you. The problem I have with that, in my opinion, is these guys here are fully nocturnal. They are super active at night. Uh, when they want to have a friend and it, oh, it's pooping. I know, it's pooping um, on me. And it, when you're bonding with it and that and you put it back into the cage, if you don't have a friend with it, it is alone and bored all night when it wants to have someone with it. So uh, it's never recommended to get just one sugar glider. Uh, you've always got to get two or three or more of them uh, just so they have that friend they can play with at nighttime when you're not around. Uh, very active animal. They're very fast animals too. They're called sugar gliders. Uh, one, because they love sweet food and two, because they glide every time they jump. So they've got this little flap of skin, little flap of skin in between the front foot and back foot. Hang on, I gotta grab it here. Gotta grab it. Raina, help me. Raina, help me. Help me, help me, Raina. Oh, you get it? Oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. There we go. I got it. Um, little flap of skin between the front foot and the back foot that kind of works like a parachute. Uh, so every time they jump, they do spread their arms and legs and they glide like that. Raina, you gotta catch it. All right. I got it again. Now, what we're gonna do is try to keep this one from moving around a little bit. Raina, can you bring in a worm? It just chewed on my hand. Let's try to give it a worm. Hello. All right. Hold a worm on your hand like that and let's see what happens. Let's see. Let's see. It's got the worm. There. This will. Oh, oh, I got, <laughs> I got your <laughs> So it was going for the worm, but it got your finger instead. Okay, grab, grab the worm again. Let's try that again. Let's first. try it again. You did it this time. Here's what, hold it out of your hand. You did Okay, here you go, buddy. Go. Is that a boy? There, there we go. All right, here, you give a cinnamon one too real quick. Now, when these guys eat what's really cool and sort of disgusting, it is not gonna actually eat the exoskeleton of the worm. It's gonna rip the worm apart and eat just the guts and the insides. Um, it doesn't want that hard exoskeleton. I'm scared. I don't want him to bite me. Here's cinnamon, right here. Now watch the difference in how the possum eats. The possum's gonna shove the whole thing into its mouth 
and then he's gonna chew and chew and chew for about 20 or not 20 about two minutes now same thing with him he doesn't want to eat the exoskeleton either so where this one rips the worm apart and drops the skin that guy chews and sucks all of the juices out at once and then he'll actually spit out this dry pellet of the exoskeleton uh, so you can just spit a dead worm on you in a minute perfect uh but you can see this one here is just really going away just ripping that oh thing this apart. is so funny every time it takes a bite oh yeah he smacks his lips and his tongue comes out See, look at that. Oh my goodness, look how cute it is. Okay, let's get a little thing beside each other eating. Oh no, no, oh, I dropped the worm. Another worm, another worm, another worm. You can oh. feed him. Can I help feed him? Like, stop chewing my hand. <laughs> <laughs> These animals are savage. <laughs> cute shot of. Um, I was gonna call this one a koala for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So there's a couple of these small frays. And neither one of these I will ever recommend as a pet. Uh, I know people will disagree with me on the sugar glider one, but I've had enough sugar gliders in the past that I, I never recommend them as a pet. Sure, if you know what you're doing, you got the time and the space and, and the knowledge in that, by all means. Uh, but it, I, I don't think they're the greatest pet in the world to get. Uh, and the opossums, you're not going to be able to get one anyway. So yeah, go ahead and try. <laughs> um, yeah, there we go. So there's a couple of the really cool little small animals we have here. Yeah. So I think that's all for today. Um, oh, <laughs> he's done with done his that. worm. Throws oh. it on the ground. Doesn't even care. Nope. So if you want to come meet these small mammals at Wild Education, book a tour with Mike and Raina. Um, visit their website at Wild Education. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and... Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.